ventilation real quickly. As you know, we have two general modes of ventilation, if you want to look at that. I have a mode, uh, modes that are full support modes, where the ventilator pretty much does all the work. These would be uh, some of your older modes, like uh, CMV, continuous mechanical ventilation, um, and, and um, assist control, uh, where really the, the ventilator is doing all the work of breathing. And however, when we talk about partial support modes of ventilation, specifically uh, SIMV, so specifically we're talking about SIMV, synchronized intermittent um, mandatory ventilation, this term pressure support is going to be relevant. Um, pressure support is not relevant in modes um, where the ventilator is doing all the work. And that's probably the, the first big point of understanding that pressure support is for a patient that can take spontaneous breaths. Now, in a control mode like assist control, the patient isn't taking spontaneous breaths. They may be triggering the ventilator spontaneously, but they are most certainly not taking spontaneous breaths. However, in synchronized intermittent mandatory uh, ventilation, what I have is I have a mandatory component. I have two components. I have the first component, which is mandatory. And this in volume control ventilation generally means I set a rate, a respiratory rate, I'll put a little F there for frequency, and I set a tidal volume. And that ventil, and let's just go ahead and throw in some numbers, 10 and 500 mils. So what that means is that ventilator is a mandatory control ventilation this is going to give that patient 10 breaths a minute, 500 milliliters of breath. However, SIMV we know is somewhat unique, and we'll just put number two, in that the patient can take spontaneous breaths. So if the patient wants to take 15 breaths a minute, for example, five breaths over the mandatory rate, the patient can do that. The ventilator will allow the patient to take their own breaths. Now, I'm not going to get into discussion as to which mode is better and, and so on and so forth uh, because that becomes real complicated and, and that's not really the point of this discussion. The point is really to understand pressure support. So we know what SIMV is, we know how it works, and we know that the patient can take spontaneous breaths. Now let's develop some intuition about taking a spontaneous breath. So here I have um, an Acme 101 ventilator with Acme 101 tubing and an Acme 101 endotracheal tube in my patient. And again, you guys are going to be exposed to my horrific art, and I understand that which has been seen cannot be unseen. Um, however, hopefully uh, this will help with um, the intuitive understanding nonetheless. So I've got my ventilator, I've got my patient, and hopefully you can appreciate that my patient's giving the old thumbs down. Something's not right here. My patient is not happy. And it has to do with the way that the patient is taking spontaneous breaths. So let's just think about this intuitively. I have an endotracheal tube in the airway. And as a general rule, the endotracheal tube is going to be narrower than my airway. It's going to be narrow because it has to fit into my trachea. So as a general rule that endotracheal tube is going to be narrower than my trachea. So there's going to be more resistance. My patient's going to have increased resistance, right? They have to breathe on a spontaneous breath. They have to breathe through the endotracheal tube, but it doesn't stop there. They also have to breathe through the ventilator circuit and ultimately through the ventilator, right? The ventilator, um, if I'm an SIV in, in breathing, breathing room air or something close to room air, you can just kind of draw a picture like this and you can see that the patient has to breathe through all of that tubing through the ventilator and so on and so forth. So as you can imagine, this adds some resistance. The patient has to work harder than they normally would to breathe. If the patient wasn't intubated, that tube was out of there, the work of breathing would be lower because they're not breathing through all this tubing. So that's a big point. In SIMV, yes, the patient can take spontaneous breaths, but at the cost of having increased work of breathing. 
that patient has a lot of stuff to breathe through. So, here comes pressure support to save the day, sort of. There's a lot of debate about um, some of the best adjuncts and so on and so forth. Again, I'm not going to get into that because that's not the point here today. The point is, where does pressure, how do we use pressure support? What does it do intuitively? So, what I like to think about is I like to think about a balloon. So imagine we have a little balloon here, and it's filled with air, and it has a, it has a pressure. I'll just say P sub naught. And you can make up whatever pressure you want, but you can assume that the pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. And when I go ahead and untie that balloon and put my lips around the, end, uh, the ending of it, and um, I open my mouth, that balloon pushes air. You kind of have that, that pushing motion, and, and the air kind of goes, and you kind of have that rush, that rush, that flow of air. Well, I kind of imagine that as being somewhat similar to pressure support. And what pressure support does is, is when I have pressure support, it recognizes when the patient is attempting to take a breath, when the patient begins to inhale. It triggers a ventilator. The, tr the ventilator goes, oh, this patient's taking a spontaneous breath, and what I'm going to do, like this balloon, is I'm going to give some flow. I am going to add a little extra flow and a little extra pressure. I'm going to give some pressure. I'm going to put some flow and some pressure into that circuit. And what that flow and pressure is going to do is it's going to take away some of the resistance that the patient has to breathe against. And hopefully that makes some intuitive or there, there is some intuition there that if I have this, maybe, maybe you can even think about hooking maybe a little balloon up to the ventilator, and when the patient um, goes to take a breath, that little balloon, you open the little balloon up and it goes, and it kind of gives some flow and some pressure. Now, let's be clear, this is not ventilating the patient um, in a controlled manner. And what I mean by that is the ventilator is not forcing the air in, not pushing the air in, um, like like it would with a regular um, pressure controlled um, mandatory breath. You know, that's not the idea of pressure support. The idea of pressure support is allow the patient to take that breath, but to give them a little help, to take away some of that resistance by adding a little extra flow and a little extra pressure. And that's what pressure support does. And uh, hopefully there's some intuition there. So. How do we do optimal pressure support? A lot of times what I find is I find that people just go with 10 pressure support because that's what they've always done. Well, a quick easy, easy starting point for me is what I do is I measure um, the plateau pressure. And if you remember, we talk about a uh, monitoring ventilator. I'll have my peak pressure and then I'll do a slight inspiratory hold and the waveform will drop down a little bit. So here's my PIP, my peak pressure. It'll drop down a little bit and it'll plateau here, and that's my P plat. And generally, um, plateau pressure is a, it mirrors your static compliance. Well, what I do is, let's say the PIP is 30, and the plateau pressure is 20. What I do is I take the difference between the PIP and the plateau, in this case, it, the difference is 10, and that would be my starting point for pressure support, right? Because pressure support, the idea of pressure support is to decrease resistance, and, and we know that plateau pressure is, in essence, um, compliance. So the difference between that all the way up to the PIP, that, that difference of 10 in this case, um, that is going to suggest a certain amount of resistance. So um, I, I'd start around 10 or maybe 5 if that were the case. Now, obviously, if I run into conditions where I have lots of resistance, like bronchospasm, mucus plugs, and so on and so forth, pressure support may not be the best thing. The best thing to do is to, uh, to correct the underlying cause. So pressure support 